It's that time of year again and the kids are off school and we really don't have a huge amount of time to actually produce these videos. Some of these videos can take upwards of about eight hours to actually produce and making the voiceovers while kids are running around screaming can be very difficult. So you're just gonna have to bear with us over the next six weeks or so while the kids are off, but we'll get back to normal very soon. Anyway, we are looking at the AlphaWise T1 mini PC today, but in actual fact, it's a B-Link product. It's actually the B-Link S2, and it features the latest Gemini Lake Intel processor, just like that laptop we looked at just a few days ago now. Anyway, my name's Matthew, and you're watching another review by the MXQ Project. So let's take a look inside the box. Well this mini PC would be a replacement to say a standard Android TV box and I can tell you right now it would blow them out of the water. The performance from this thing is not only leaps and bounds ahead of the previous generation such as the Cherry Trail found in the B-Link S1, it is a huge amount in terms of performance difference compared to say an Android TV box even with a really fast processor like the S912. The performance from this thing is really really good and it's worth every single penny as well as that you're running Windows 10 so as we've seen we've just unboxed it and you get the AlphaWise T1 otherwise known as the B-Link S2 and we'll be taking a look at that in a second we get a visa mount we get the actual power supply luckily they have sent me a UK one which is not actually that common for them to do that but that's fantastic I don't have to scramble around looking for my adapter as well as that we get two HDMI cables, one long one, one short one and as of course we don't actually get a remote with this we'll have to go out and find our own USB mouse, keyboard or air mouse whatever you want to use. But let's move on now, let's have a look around the device and let's see what features it comes with, ports etc. Straight away the connectivity on this device is excellent, not only the fact that we have a hard drive bay underneath it, we don't actually get it with a hard drive, we can connect our own if we want to but we'll get onto that later on. On the front we've got two USB 3.0 ports, we've got USB-C connection as well which is great to see as well as that we've got the power button. On the side here we've got the vents Obviously just on the bottom again, we've got that hard drive bay which we can put a 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD into there. More ventilation of course on the bottom. And on the back we've got two, yes two HDMI inputs which is great to see. Normally on these devices we get one HDMI, we also then get a VGA input which you know isn't the best but two H HDMI inputs is great to see and it's the first time we've actually seen that. We get Ethernet and of course we get more USB ports, we get another two and yeah so you definitely don't need a USB hub for this device. Great connectivity, fantastic so far. Appearance wise it looks, you know, it looks fine, I really wouldn't be mounting this anywhere. That's going to be, you know, in my face or anything like that. It comes with a Visa mount so if you wanted to mount it on the back of your TV you can actually do that. But yeah, it looks fine. There's nothing particularly special looking about it. It's certainly not nice looking like an Apple product, but overall not a bad piece of kit. And there's plenty of ventilation there. There's no running fans or anything like that. It's totally and utterly silent. And we've tested it over a course of a couple of hours and it doesn't really get too hot. I'd imagine if you're running 4K for any length of time, it will get a little bit toasty. But apart from that, it keeps itself pretty cool. Performance is pretty good, so we turn it on and it takes absolutely no time at all to load to the actual Windows 10 menu. And yeah, just like that laptop we looked at just the other week, it's really fast loading. So I'm not going to walk you around Windows 10, what would be the point in that? You guys know what Windows 10 is. I'm not a big fan of it, I prefer Windows 7 and yeah, Windows 10 is not my cup of tea to be honest with you. But apart from that, I would not be changing anything about this purely because it's so fast. It comes with 4GB of RAM, it's soldered onto the main board of course, 
but I think it's more than enough for what this device will be used for and the people that it's going to be aimed at. As well as that, you've got 64 gigabytes of shared storage, which is more than enough, I think, for most people. But of course, you've got the hard drive base. If you wanted to expand it, if you've got maybe a big game collection or something, then you can put that in there. But of course, we are limited by the actual specification. So it's not going to be running too many, you know, of the latest titles, but we'll get onto that later on. So as well as having four gigabytes of RAM and of course that Gemini Lake processor, we've got dual band Wi-Fi, we've got 2.4G and 5G, and I can tell you right now, the chipset in here is really, really good. It actually maxes out my download speed and upload speed, so I just know that the connection is really strong and it's all there, so you're not having to worry about maybe things being a bit slow every now and again, and it's performed pretty well over playing films and streaming and all that sort of stuff. So in terms of benchmarking this device, I really don't feel there's too much point to it. It's an Atom processor with four gigabytes of RAM. It's built for playing video, and that's pretty much it. However, it will run some games, and we'll get onto that just in a second, but if we maybe benchmark it with Crystal Disk Mark, for example, and see just how well the storage works on this, and it's pretty fast. As you can see, the actual figures are half decent. That's probably why it booted up so quickly. Not as fast as that jumper laptop we looked at. It's not quite as fast as the N.2 storage, but it's pretty decent, and it's a lot faster than previous models. So yeah, very good job. When we move on to other benchmarking, I really don't see the point in doing it. This is a very simple benchmarking tool to give us an idea of how well it's going to be performed with gaming, for example. And it just says it's a load of rubbish, basically. This device just isn't good enough. But if we load up some games like Minecraft, for example, as you can see, it runs it just fine. As well as that, we can look at Asphalt again. This is a pretty 3D intensive game. Graphically, yeah, it's pushing it to its limits, kind of. And although it's a Windows 10 star game, so it's kind of designed to work on pretty much any Windows 10 device, it's doing a pretty decent job, and I could play this game all day long on this device with no issues at all. So when we move on to say proper games, we might not even be able to install them. Here I have Fortnite ready to go, but unfortunately it just won't load the actual Epic Game Launcher. It just won't entertain it at all. I've tried all the different tutorials to how to resolve this issue and it just won't do it. I would have expected Fortnite to run on this, but it seems there's some sort of maybe software glitch going on. It doesn't like the hardware, whatever reason, it just won't have it. I've even tried all the different ones online, all the tutorials to actually get it running, and it just isn't having it. So all the game titles, I expect them to actually work pretty well on this device. Say games that have come out maybe pre-2010, maybe, maybe some of them will have to be put on the lower game settings. But if we move on to say emulators, it's going to do a pretty decent job at emulating old consoles. Crash Bandicoot, for example, runs absolutely flawlessly on this device, as well as other games. But can it do some video editing? Yes, it actually can. We installed Vegas on this, and I'd be happy all day long just to sit here and edit a video on it, for example. There's no issues with the timeline. There's no glitchy trying to keep up with things. It's doing it absolutely fine. And here's a video I am editing right now, and... I'm quite happy with it. It's performed just the same as my desktop, but I've got the tower PC and yeah, no problems there. However, rendering does take quite a while. So that's probably the only downside. Of course, it is limited by that Intel 600 graphics and yeah, it's gonna slow the rendering down quite a bit. So guys, video playback on this is, well, it's perfect. It can handle up to 4K. Yes, I did say at the start that 4K will probably overheat this device. It might do. I don't have a 4K TV right now to actually test it, but other devices that we've tested running 4K, such as the Beer and Guess One, I've done it, but it's got a bit toasty over a period of time. That's just the nature of running 4K, I guess. And yeah, you should expect some heat, <laughs> to say the least, from your device. But... 
say playing Cody. Cody runs fine on this device, and we've got some video playback here. Cody's absolutely no issues at all, no glitching, no crashing, or anything like that. YouTube, for example, no issues at all to actually report about. And finally, Netflix. I've got Netflix playing here, and yeah, everything is great. So as far as video playback, which is probably the majority of the time you're going to be using this device for, yeah, video playback is perfect. So this is pretty much the end now of this review. I really hope you enjoyed it and I've gone into as much detail as I can. This is a Windows 10 device. Yes, it is limited by that hardware, but at the end of the day, it is a full and complete operating system and you will be able to do a lot more things with this device as long as they're not too hardware intensive. I'm sure you'll be able to hook it up to maybe your Xbox and stream games to it. The actual Wi-Fi is fast enough, I suspect, for that. As well as that, you've got the Ethernet option as well. So if you're wanting to stream your Xbox games to this, it will be able to deal with that, no problems at all. Of course, just remember, you're not going to be able to play those, you know, AAA titles on this device. No, it's just not going to handle that. I'm sure you guys can be creative enough and come up with some really cool ideas of what to do with this device. Because again... I want to say it again, it is Windows 10 at the end of the day and it's fully capable of doing pretty much whatever Windows 10 can do. So there we have it. I really do like this device. It is a great piece of kit. So the price of this as well, just, just while we're here, is probably near the same sort of price as a NVIDIA Shield. So would you buy this over a NVIDIA Shield? Let me know in the comments section below. And yeah, my name's Matthew, and you've been watching another video review by the MXQ Project. Don't forget to check out the website, mxqproject.com, the Facebook group, and of course, Twitter. Thanks again for watching, and we shall see you very soon.